One of the colours that artists struggle with the most is mixing greens and maybe you're one of those artists where you just can't quite seem to get the greens that you want and they just come out looking garish or neon and unnatural and they just don't work in your paintings. Well I used to have this trouble as well and then I figured out how I could mix greens in a simple way and just understand them better so in this video I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to do it in the context of this landscape painting inspired by the Scottish Highlands. So this is not going to be one of these videos where I'm just mixing lots of different greens on my palette. I thought it would be better to do it in the context of a landscape painting that's got a lot of greens in it. Now I started this artwork by painting my dark values first. And I used a mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of yellow ochre. So this is like a super dark green but also low chroma as well. Now why paint the dark values first? Well, it helps to set up the whole tonal framework for the painting. The general rule is we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground and then as landforms recede, the darks aren't as dark and the lights aren't as light. So if we paint these first, it's gonna make it much easier to paint the areas in light afterwards, especially if we're painting greens because greens can be a pretty tricky color to paint. And one of the main difficulties that artists have with green is how to desaturate them or make the chroma of the color lower so that it doesn't jump forward in the landscape. We can use our most saturated greens in the foreground, but certainly not in the distance. So if we paint our darks first, then we've got something to measure it against when it comes to painting our greens. So as I work into the distance, the darks there aren't as dark and they're getting lighter, plus they're getting a blue cast to them as well. And for this I've used a mix of ultramarine blue with a little burnt sienna, some titanium white and a little bit of alizarin crimson. Now when it came to mixing the first lot of greens, I started off with that hill in the background. And I used a mix of yellow ochre, some ultramarine blue, some titanium white and this formed the base of my green and then I increased the saturation by mixing in a small amount of cadmium yellow and cobalt teal. Also rounded it off with some alizarin crimson. I could even use some phthalo green as well although you need to be careful not to use too much of this colour as it can quickly overpower your mixture. But the important thing is here is the colour can't be too high in saturation otherwise it's going to come forward in the painting. But then as we move forward in the painting here, then we can increase the saturation. So we can use more colors such as cadmium yellow, for example, and cobalt teal and phthalo green. That's just gonna increase the saturation of the green. Now I'm using oil paints here to paint this artwork and I'm using a fairly limited palette. So not that many colors. The brand of oil paint I'm using is Blue Ridge Oils. And if you wanna get some, I've put a link in the description box below. They're really nice paints to work with. Now I'm painting on an 11 inch by 14 inch linen canvas panel here that's made by Sourcetech at canvaspanels.com and I'm using Rosemary & Co brushes. So I'm trying to cover ground quickly here by using number five and number six bristle flat brushes. And when I paint these greens, I'm just thinking about values. So how light or dark the subject is and actually there's some rules for painting greens in the landscape because it's often generally one of the more lighter value colors depending on whether it's in light or in shadow but in general the ground planes of the scene that you're painting often covered in grass is one of the more lighter values to be found in the landscape and john carlson said this in his book carlson's guide to landscape painting so as i say when i'm painting these greens i'm thinking about the value of them now i wanted to have the greens mainly in shadow but with this mountain in the midground here or more towards the background actually but have that in light as well so it's creating a focal area in the painting now with these greens i mixed i started off with the background greens first of all and then as i went my way forward i increased the saturation of the greens and i did this by adding more cadmium yellow medium ultramarine blue and colors such as cobalt teal or phthalo green but it's always important to round off these colors with a color that contains red because red is opposite to green on the color wheel. So I can use something like an alizarin crimson or even a burnt sienna, which actually I'd use more likely to be using more in the distance of a landscape painting. However, for the foreground of a painting, I'd mix in something like a cadmium red light. 
Now at this stage I'm blocking in my painting here so I'm getting down all the main colours and values and just forming a base to work from so that once it's dry it will be easier for me to start adding details to it. Now normally I try and do the block in session of the painting in one go but in this case I did it over two sessions because I actually painted this live with my art students. And the way this landscape composition came about was actually from multiple different photos from one of the students in my group. She went on a trip to Scotland and we thought it would be a cool thing to paint and a cool example of how you don't need to copy photographs exactly but actually use them as a guide. And through the sketching process in the beginning we were able to design this composition. So in real life it doesn't exist like this at all but we took lots of elements from different photographs and constructed this composition. Now once I would painted the floodplain that's in the midground along with the river I then worked my way to the foreground and this is where some of my most saturated or high chroma greens are in the painting. So again for this I used a base green mix of yellow ochre with some ultramarine blue and some cadmium yellow medium and then I mixed in some titanium white. I also used colours such as thalo green to increase the saturation and also some cadmium red light. And then I add variations to these mixtures so maybe a bit more titanium white here and a bit more cadmium yellow there if that makes sense. Just adjusting the colour mixes to create some different tones. But really the secret to mixing greens is really thinking more about the value which is how light or dark your green is and how saturated it is. So we'll find our most saturated greens in the foreground but then as the landforms recede the greens are going to become more desaturated and lower in chroma. The green wavelengths don't tend to travel well over a long distance so the intensity of the green will start to be lost the further away you go into the distance. Now adding some kind of a red element into your greens is really important in, towards keeping your greens in check. So making sure that they're not garish looking or just really unnatural. So the red helps to make it look more organic. So as I say using things like cadmium red light which I'd only really use in the foreground. I don't tend to use it for distant greens. But certainly colours like alizarin crimson or burnt sienna. As I say, just going to help to make that green look more organic and natural. The other thing about blocking in a painting, as I say, it serves a kind of map for you to work from, a base for you to work from. But the other thing is, is you want to keep the colours tonally darker to start with and then you've got plenty of room to add your lighter layers of paint as you work through the painting. And that's what I've done here. So all up I'm keeping an eye on my tonal values, the lights and darks, and this is really important. And if you're unsure of the values in the landscape, just take your photograph and switch it to black and white. And then take your own painting, take a photo of it and switch it to black and white. And you can match up the values just to make sure that it's working properly. In fact, when we painted this with my students, we even did a value study first before we got into this painting here. And we just used three colours, ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna and some titanium white. So we could just get an idea of where all the lights and darks are in the scene. Also just by using these three colours, if you're struggling with colour mixing, it's a soft introduction into colour mixing because I often use these colours for my shadows. And it just helps overall as I use these colours as part of my main palette. But anyway, at this point I'd finished the blocking in stage and then what I did was I let the painting dry so that I could begin the next stage of the painting which is modelling and adding details. So this is where I'm starting to work on individual zones and just refine areas, begin building up some details and just adjusting shapes and forms. So I started off by working on the clouds in the background. I darkened the mountain in the background. Initially the green that I added I felt was a little bit too saturated and was bringing the mountain in the background forward a bit and I wanted to actually make it sit back further in the landscape also make it look like it was raining and wet but anyway I carried on working in the background and finishing off that background mountain later on but now I'm just starting to build up details and I'm switching up my brushes here so I'm using some synthetic flat brushes 
mainly number three synthetic flat brushes. I'm using the Ivory range from Rosemary & Co and also their Eclipse brushes, which you can get some quite decent marks with them. Both are quite different. So here I was working on the exposed rock faces of this mountain. It's the only part in the painting mainly that's in the full sunlight, so there's gonna be some warmer tones here. And actually for the rocks, I'm using similar colors to what I was using for the shadows. So mainly burnt sienna with ultramarine blue, titanium white, and alizarin crimson. And there's even a dash of yellow ochre in there just for some warmer tones. Then following that, I was just restating some of these dark shadows again using the mix that I used to begin with ultramarine blue a little burnt sienna a little titanium white and alizarin crimson and I was making sure that that mountain was well underway with the details so that all that was left to do afterwards was to just perhaps add a few last highlights and some other details within the side of the mountain then I was working away to the other side of the mid ground just getting some different green tones and as I said the greens really centre around a mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue and titanium white to start with which is going to create a low chroma green and then I can increase the chroma or saturation by mixing in some cadmium yellow medium, also colours such as cobalt teal or phthalo green and then making sure that I'm adding some kind of a red in there even if it's only in a small amount, something like an alizarin crimson or a burnt sienna or if I'm mixing greens for the foreground using cadmium red light. And then when I come to work at the greens in the foreground, I'm just using much less yellow ochre in the mix and more cadmium yellow medium. Now, if you're struggling with your color mixing or your compositions or tonal values in the landscape, perhaps you just can't seem to get that depth or distance in your paintings, or you're just not being able to paint the artworks that you'd imagined, and that you could be truly proud of, then let me help you. I'm giving away a free landscape painting blueprint that details my painting process and how you can approach a painting in a structured manner that's gonna give you way better results and also the next step in your landscape painting journey. So if you'd like this free ebook, landscape painting blueprint, just click the link below, I've put it in the description box. And as I say, it's totally free. Now then back to the painting here and what I'm doing is I'm just starting to add details. Things such as these rocks that are in the midground here, so the shadows and the rocks and then the areas that are in light. I'm keeping in mind that this whole area is in cloud shadow so there's not going to be any strong highlights here or anything. But just getting a bit of detail in and I'm using some synthetic flat brushes in order to paint this. There's also more details in the rocks in the background as well so just adding some details there and just bits of detail here and there that's just going to break up that green and just add interest to the landscape overall and then the next thing to do is to add some lighter tone to these mid-ground areas so i'm still keeping in mind that the value is reasonably dark so i've got to make sure these aren't too light but just painting some highlight on these areas and it's going to help to give more depth and definition to these folding hills at the base of these mountains. Now going back to these greens here they're reasonably saturated but I've desaturated them slightly so it pushes them back into the distance a little bit but as I'm coming forward into the painting I'm increasing the saturation of the greens. And again, it's still a mix of yellow ochre with some cadmium yellow medium, ultramarine blue, titanium white, and then the greens I've cooled off by using either some phthalo green or cobalt teal, and then rounded it off with either some cadmium yellow light or alizarin crimson. And I'm just continually making adjustments. If I feel that the green is too warm, I can just cool it down by mixing in some ultramarine blue or even a little bit of cobalt teal. Now at this point in the painting, I'd worked quite a few sessions on it and I was thinking about getting it finished. And once more, I decided to let the painting dry so that I could then add the last details to the painting. Now, one of the things that was really bothering me about this painting was I wasn't really happy with the mountain that was in the background. And I decided to change it completely. I decided to just mute those colors in there 
and just push it back further into the distance. So those initial greens that I painted to begin with, I decided to pretty much get rid of them. And I used my shadow mix, the same colors that I've used for the clouds and some of the other shadows in the scene and made the value quite a bit lighter than the landforms that are in front of it. And again, I used the same colors. So a mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna to desaturate titanium white and some alizarin crimson. Now burnt sienna is a dark orange and orange is opposite to blue on the color wheel so it combines really well with ultramarine blue and is great for desaturating it. And then with the addition of some alizarin crimson it just helps to give it a violet tint. Now one of the effects I wanted to make in these distant mountains was distant rainfall. It's a very cloudy wet day and just some sun passing through to create the spotlighting effect on the mid-ground mountain here. But what I did was I created some more of the cloud shadow mix, which was the same colors as the background mountain there, but I've used more titanium white in the mix to make the value lighter. And then I just did some vertical downwards brush marks in those clouds, just to haze it out in the distance. One of the last things I'm doing in this painting is adding details to the foreground and painting the grasses and other plants that are growing there and I'm using this 3 8 of an inch bristle dagger brush called the Tisch dagger invented by Andrew Tischler who is really useful for painting grass and what I'm doing next here is I'm just re-establishing some of the dark tones and also adding some lighter value color to the tops of these grasses and sedges and other plants that are growing here. I can even use my number zero rigger brush to paint the suggestion of some blades of grass. When it comes to fine detail, I tend to save this more towards the end of the painting, along with my lightest value color, depending on what area of the painting that I'm working on. So last of all, I just finish up the painting by just adding a few details here and there and just tidying up areas. And I'm using a number three synthetic flat brush. So when it comes to painting greens or any color, I more think in terms of value, i.e. the lights and darks, and how saturated the colors are. Generally, we'll find our most saturated greens in the foreground, and then as the greens go into the distance, they become more desaturated. Hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.